Today is the second last episode of the Switch Clicks podcast. So, we'll be covering most of the topics that either never came up while recording, or we just didn't have time for. The following intro song was from Assassin's Creed Revelations. How do you pronounce it? Somebody say the word of the song. Con... Constantinye? <laughs> I think that's what it was. Recommended by Moose Lord on our Discord server. This was actually an episode that we were going to do about your music recommendations, but we ended up scrapping. Stay tuned for the outro for an additional song. Welcome to the second last Switch Clicks podcast, episode 154. My name is Dakota, and today I'm joined by Nathan. Hello there. And Tyler. Hello. The Switch Clicks podcast has journeyed with you for just over three incredible years, and it's been an honor to have you with us throughout this time. However, we've reached a crossroads. After much reflection and consideration, we've made the decision to sunset the Switch Clicks podcast. While this marks the end of a cherished chapter, it also signifies the beginning of something new and exciting. But fret not, because this isn't a goodbye, but rather a transformation. We are shifting all our creative focus towards our YouTube channel, where we will be producing a series of meticulously crafted scripted content covering the games we love that we believe you'll adore. This new chapter will allow us to have more fun making these videos and collaborating more than ever than we did on the podcast, because let's be real. Behind the scenes, we are diligently crafting comprehensive analyses, thought-provoking opinion pieces, and maintaining our commitment to hosting engaging community events like Triforce Trivia. As a sneak peek into what's on the horizon, October promises an insightful exploration from me into the evolutionary journey of Super Mario's art style. It's going to be very good, I promise. Moreover, the highly anticipated Zelda month is just around the corner, promising a captivating celebration of Tears of the Kingdom. We are incredibly grateful for your unwavering support over the years. Your feedback, comments, and enthusiasm has been our driving force, and we're excited to embark on this remastered journey with you. Stay tuned for updates on our YouTube channel and other platforms as we transition into this new era of content creation. We are confident that the best is yet to come. We can't wait to share it with you. Thank you for being an integral part of the Switch Clicks podcast's incredible legacy, and we look forward to continuing this adventure with you in our new format. So we do have a list of topics today um, that we never got to really cover, um, and maybe different games that we wanted to cover, um, even some news that we didn't get to cover and we kind of have strong opinions about. So might as well get started. Uh, yeah. First thing we have on the list is games that we ever wanted to talk about, but we never got to. That's a that's a relatively long list, especially when we have PlayStation, Xbox, and some Steam and Epic games that we just never really mm -hmm. talked about. Yeah, yeah, we were very focused, like primarily Nintendo focused, but I think that's what we play mostly mm -hmm. anyway. But yeah, there are a couple games for sure that. Might come up in future videos, but I know I've got a yeah. couple. One of the big outliers here would be um, Armor Core 6, which is what Kaiser would be. He's, mm -hmm. he's constantly ranting about it. Um, <laughs> you might hear it in future videos, but that's pretty much what he's been focused on ever since it came out. Mm -hmm. Big mech game go burr. <laughs> <laughs> also, whatever the most recent popular fighting game is, you could say. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that too that probably would fit um i know i don't know how we'd ever fit this into literally anything but yeah. i think like my favorite game of recent memory is probably the hitman trilogy love those games to death oh they're so good you know but, what yeah those are really good games <laughs> but i never got down to trying them Except maybe like five seconds of a cloud version on the Switch. <laughs> that's that's the ideal way to play it, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't... They're like... They're weird games because they're not really like... I don't know. I don't know how we'd ever fit it into any topic. Or um, there might be a video on them later in the future. But like, yeah, they're... Yeah. They're just games that sit in the back of my mind forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, there's not I've really always, much to go off of from other than intrigued. the speedruns. Yeah, I've always been intrigued watching it, but it's like not my type of game. It's a bit of it's a bit of a puzzle game. So it's kinda of Yeah. Hard. 
big fan. Oh, love that game to death. <laughs> I'm surprised there's a game that I I don't think I've ever like brought up on the podcast is Elden Ring. <laughs> like, oh I'm yeah, really uh, surprised. That I is. Suppose kind of that's... Surprised. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because yeah, that was in the news. I have to say, came out. I think that was my game of the year last year, and it yeah, was, was like not even close. <laughs> Oh, fair that's also enough. Your favorite Souls game well, was my only Souls game. <laughs> didn't you? Didn't you say you play like Dark Souls Remastered and Demon Souls Remake? I got Dark Souls Remastered on the Switch as a gift, like four or five years ago, the year it came mm-hmm. out, I think. Uh, yeah. But I never played it. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. I booted up Demon Souls after Elden Ring came out because I was like, oh, I want us to try some of the other ones, and <laughs> oh. That one's so much more annoying than Elden Ring. <laughs> like, more primitive or just much more typical? Well, it's, it's like Dark Souls, but you don't get bonfires. <laughs> you, yeah. you go into a level, and you have to go through the entire level and finish it, and then you go into the next area. Um, you died. And I think I love Dark Souls combat. I love all the Souls games, how they play. I hate backtracking. <laughs> I hate going through the same thing over and over again. That's my exact problem with Metroidvanias, which is why I haven't dived into Metroid. (laughs) I will force you to play Metroid. We haven't really (laughs) talked about Metroid that much, have we? No, we haven't. No, it's only really been in passing. It's really only been me who's been playing Metroid games lately. Mm -hmm. I played a few, like some of the older ones, like Fusion and Super Metroid, uh, a couple years ago, but I don't think I beat either of them. Hmm. it's kind of honestly i was about to say it's kind of like zelda in that way for me but i think i've dived into metroid more than i have zelda <laughs> i think well Met- at least metroid is much faster pace i think zelda just takes way too long sometimes it is true it's hard to get into a game like that when you are when you're automatically sinking so much time into it mm-hmm. i've got a few kind of like indie games to shout out that i won't really expand on just go and play them uh Hades, that's a great game. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got Littlewood, which is basically like a pixel Animal Crossing without the animals. Um, Ooh, so it's not a little bit so linear, not, but still good. Not bear and breakfast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do I have? Downwell is a cool game. Um, it's just oh, where you're I just falling and you just don't want to fall too far. Uh, mm-hmm. I've said this multiple po- times, but Shovel Knight, greatest indie game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never let that down. Uh, Hollow Knight, we don't really talk about. I never very, really got far in that. Oh, no, mm. Me neither. I need, to, I need to really get into it now. I've got decently far. <laughs> wish I could get further. Like, wish I had the commitment to get further in it. Oh, the Once other again. ones. <laughs> Steam World Dig and Steam World Dig 2. Those are the only oh, Metroidvanias that I have loved. <laughs> oh interesting interesting i don't think i've ever talked about how much i love terraria on this podcast either like that's <laughs> yeah you've I only think, really talked about really once. once okay yeah because terraria i think is very easily like top three game ever for me yeah it it's so it's so good love mm. that game you also have a uh, game story uh, i know game kaiser story. and i played played that extensively it actually I... went free on epic games like i think a few weeks ago i played cave story plus on the switch i believe the year it came out on the switch same same here i don't i don't get the hype i know it's like a cult classic a little bit but i don't understand the hype i think it has to do with the lore of it because it i mean it is like pretty dark compared to like what the art style presents to be wait it was dark I just, yeah it was, I it's, it's a really, really dark game. my head <laughs> It's a really dark game. Like, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of death involved. It's also quite like mm. an old game. Like the original original is like a 2000s game, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty old. Um, yeah, pre Flash, just... essentially. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, speaking of Flash, oh. Binding of Isaac. Quick shout out. Ooh, another <laughs> one. <laughs> speaking of Flash, we never talked about Flash games. Oh, that would have been a fun topic. I got like. Classic- oh. Classic Flash games, games, classic mobile games, you know, all that, all that mm-hmm. jazz back in the day. I don't think I've ever met anyone else who's played this, but have, did either of you play Transylvania? No. No? Oh, 
Never it's a Flash it. game that died with Flash Player, and I'm so upset. Oof. It's just like a little couldn't, platformer. Couldn't you like play on um? What's it called? Ruffle, or whatever that third party Flash I, Player was that most of us are Yeah, so um, there's like this replacement that came on right after oh. the death, and you might be able. To I play might it. look into it. Because, yeah, I looked at, like, a bunch of, like, the uh, archive sites, and it wasn't saved, because I don't think it was super, super popular. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of other ones, like uh, the Escapist series. That game, oh, yeah, I've heard yeah, it yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, really it. Which is, like, a sequel, kind of. It's not good, mm-hmm. but <laughs> uh, it's kind of worth a mention. I, I think it's so funny... Because based on this, it's kind of like make, making me think. I, it's kind of crazy how I feel like out of like all games ever, it feels like a lot of people's top games are indie, which is very interesting. Like I feel like when indie games are good, they're just so much better than AAA. <laughs> like a, f- a small group uh, of honestly, developers, yes. <laughs> a small group of developers beating out like a massive budget AAA publisher company. Yeah, like it's a lot. cool, and like it's it's cool that that happens because it's like an underdog story, and mm-hmm. also uh, they're cheaper most of the time too, so that helps. Yeah, a lot. they are. They're much cheaper, of course. It's to the point would, where I'm, uh, I'm I'm begging Yacht Club Games to stop making Shovel Knight spinoffs and start making a Shovel Knight Two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Please right, stop making yeah. spinoffs. I, what spinoffs oh, are coming out? I, I don't think I actually. They've had uh, Shovel Knight, what is it called, Dig? And yeah, then Shovel Knight Dig. One. Interesting. <laughs> I don't think I heard They were like both basically that. mobile games. One was almost exclusive to Apple Arcade. Yeah. I've never played them because I don't want to support it because I just want my sequel. But if I want, <laughs> if I want my sequel <laughs> like funded, I need to support it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, just buy copious right. amounts of merch. They don't we sell to... like uh, straight merch. <laughs> I bought the amiibo, but that's it. <laughs> oh, another set of indie games we never talked about was uh, Rift of the Necro Dancer. Like I know Dakota, you and me, we were pretty obsessed with uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer at Ooh. one point. And we never got to down to play. <laughs> we never got Rift down. To... I'm not even sure if it's out, but like we never really talked about it in any extent. Okay, it doesn't look like it's out yet. okay at least okay at least, at least 2024 okay. good 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 so good good so it. so we didn't miss it thank gosh mm. but that won't be something that uh, that'll be another game we probably won't be able to cover unless we make a video about it yeah like i feel like that would put be plopped into like a best like 10 indie games that you must play kind of video i don't even know if we yeah. make something like that but that feels like a it'd be right at home there yeah, Rift of the Necro Dancer looks like they, they kind of just took the game and removed all the platforming or like top down dungeon play. Yeah. And now yeah. it's just um it's, it's, it's uh garage, Wario it called? It's like it's like WarioWare or Rhythm Heaven meets Rift of the Necro Dancer. Weird. That is, that's actually that's a perfect example. But it looks <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's is it. So I guess it's not a proper sequel. It's more of a spinoff. Then it's more. Of a yeah, spin-off. I think. They, okay. Yeah, they, they call it. They call it a spinoff, and then they said. Okay, that made. Yeah, sequel. I. It would be insane to make Crypt of the Necro Dancer and then Cadence of Hyrule and then just drop your all your like branding with that kind of game <laughs> for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> what else is there? Um, well. We, we haven't never really got to talk about arms. Arms is goaded. Please go play. It. <laughs> um, I know you saw my tweet, Tyler. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. It's like we managed to make a. We managed to talk about Pokemon tournament, but we never talked about arms. And those two games came out in the same year, did they? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no way I'm not doing a video about arms. I love it so much. You need to make a review about it. Not only a review. Was... I'm gonna start praising the crap out of it. Fair enough. I, I, you could be. You could I always forget well be... about that game. That game does not exist to me until someone else brings it up. <laughs> That's so depressing. <laughs> and Dakota, if it makes you feel better, you're not really alone in the whole arms hype. Um, uh, if you remember Krista from Nintendo Minute, uh, she 
was probably one of the best um best arms players around Nintendo and probably in the competitive scene too. I've got to get back into it in Challenger. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not we're no longer a podcast though. That doesn't sure. matter. <laughs> She's in the podcast. They can make extra content. Oh yeah. They can make extra content. Of course they do. Uh, d- 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 I know we made a play by tier on it, but uh, Nintendo Switch Sports, that game, yeah, you know what, and didn't do much. Yeah, I-, I was expecting to add like more stuff like water sports because the whole menu kind of looked like there was going to be something. We only added yeah. golf and nothing else. Games like game that are died. so like it's so interesting because I wonder if like years from now the Switch is going to be looked back on as like a goaded gaming console because yeah. like so many really good games have come out on it and just all like the slop will kind of be forgotten about like some other consoles and it's just gonna be so interesting because it's like the first this feels like the first console that like i've been conscious for the whole life of it and like actually know games that have been coming out so it'll be interesting to see like years from now if it's like oh yeah that was the breath of the wild the tears of the kingdom the mario odyssey one no way <laughs> and they just completely have they just completely forgotten about like one two switch or um the sequel to one two switch the sequel Everybody to one two, two switch, switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's... oh man they should yeah. have announced that sequel like they did with breath of the wild a sequel to one two switch is now in <laughs> yeah instead, instead you get Instead, they brought out Horus to do all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do wonder what games are going to be remembered super, super fondly, because there's, like, obvious ones. But, like, I wonder if, like, 10, not 10, 10 might be too short, but, like, years from now, if someone's going to look at, like, Animal Crossing New Horizons as one of, like, the goaded Switch games of all time. The COVID, because the COVID, be... the COVID savior. Yeah, I, it's going to be interesting Safe to see how that works out. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was the first. It was the first it line was the, of defense. It was the COVID people. booster shot. It was really the COVID booster shot before the booster shot, and then it completely fell <laughs> yeah. off. So, yeah. So the booster shot was not effective because two more <laughs> games came. Two more games kicked that out of the park. And I think I've I don't think we before, ever talked about it. Oh. Yeah, I think I've said this before, but New Leaf was better. Yeah, you said it before. I don't think we've ever mm-hmm. actually. We did. We did have an episode talking about COVID, though. When you think about it. That is true. I barely um, think I talked about it, but I, I, I'm planning on making a video like that. But I know other people have also made a video that what the, that basically the COVID... <laughs> COVID killed Animal Crossing New Horizons. You know what? COVID killed the Mario anniversary. We could talk about that too. Mm. Oh, actually, yeah. Speaking of Mario, I was thinking uh, about like kind of middle tier Nintendo games that are kind of forgotten about. Mario yeah. Maker Two fell off so fast. And it's so upsetting. Like, I feel like with just a little bit more heart, that would have, like, such an insane amount of longevity. Like, they could add... I still think... I honestly think Mario Maker 2 is probably up there as, like, my favorite Switch game. Yeah. But it's it's so upsetting that, like, it was just ready for, like, updates to add new versions and any, any... Yeah for like different uh, game modes and stuff game types um too. they dropped super worlds which is like probably the biggest innovation that it actually ended up making <laughs> but and then yeah, that's it that was it which I'm is still somewhat convinced that around the corner uh, a world a uh, wonder art style could be there maybe. i feel like they just didn't make mario maker 3 at that point yeah, they're gonna have to make a sequel. Well, they they want to make a sequel at that point. Oh my goodness, people would be. Then so you mad. buy another one. Then, hey, then people were mad about three, and they st- and that thing like was second play second best selling in Japan. That's true. <laughs> I would happily waste a bunch of money on Mario Maker three. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but that might just be me. Well, I wow, think that's a lot of games that come to mind. Yeah. I think so. There's I probably there's a, probably way good. more. There's probably way more down the line, but I think that's yeah, good. Enough. I think that's a good decent chunk. <laughs> if we ever like think of one late at night one day, you'll probably yeah. see it in the video at some point. <laughs> yep. <laughs>
Uh, maybe we'll move on to movies and TV shows because we don't oh, usually boy. focus on those on the show. Yeah, and we I know missed... probably Tyler has been itching. To do some stuff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, we missed so much, or at least we decided not to talk about so much on the podcast here, except for Spider Man and anime. <laughs> yeah, and anime was one like two full episodes. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, to be episodes. fair, I think that's like a good representation of what sells in the modern market, anyway. So, I think we were covering it pretty well. Uh, yeah, that's actually I, true. Don't, I don't know if it's obvious or not, based on... It probably isn't, because I don't talk about movies that much. But, like, on the ranking of, like, media I enjoy, movies are, like, yeah. so much higher up there than video games, and it's actually crazy. <laughs> I, I like video games a lot, but I would... It's, it's definitely... <clears throat> Definitely interesting how I I just yeah I've been itching I've been itching a little yeah. bit. Um, so I guess I guess one of the easiest to ta- easiest movies sets to bring up is uh, the MCU. We barely talked about the MCU. Uh, we Didn't definitely have DC after the two fandom episodes. <laughs> was that one or two? <laughs> there were two. two fandoms. Two fandom episodes <laughs> after that, we never touched them. We never talked about Star mm-hmm. Wars, even though, except no. for the Mandalorian. Yeah, there's really um, nothing to talk about. Brief. Yeah, not much. Those are just, yeah, I uh, we don't think this segment's going to be very long because, yeah. like, you see, this segment's either the entire podcast or like not super yeah. long in gen- overall. Just um, think of like ninety percent of the movies that, and like hundred percent of them don't relate to video games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Except the Mario I think movie. Most of this that is true. That one we did Mario talk movie about. Relates to- Oh yeah, so every any any video game movie we talked about, any video game TV show we also talked about, but we never talked about Love anything it. that was just a yeah. purely a film. Uh, I guess like I don't want to talk about all of them because that'd take forever. But a brief yeah. rundown uh, of my thoughts. I'm so MCU's falling off so hard right before my it's crumbling, <laughs> yeah. it's crumbling between my fingers, and I can't no. hold on much longer. I-, I can barely hold on either. I'm it's... like. I'm huffing so much DC related copium right now that I'm I'm like I'm out of it. <laughs> you know, with DC, I'm like I actually started rewatching uh the Tim Burton movies. Um mm-hmm. cuz I I, I want to watch those before I get to the Flash. Even though okay. I know it's technically not that important, but it's I want yeah, to watch important those in the slightest. Not okay. important. It's not all, important but... in the slightest. <laughs> but I want to do it because I also watched. I also, you know, we also worked on your your reviews on those movies, and um, those mm. ones all interested me. Yeah. Uh, what did you think? What do you think of the Burton ones? How, have you had you seen them before? Or I'm halfway through the first one, and I'm oh, enjoying okay, it so enough. far. It is. It is Good. so amazing. Yeah. It's, like this like, is it's this prob- is. Oh, it's such a cool <laughs> aesthetic. Like it's such yeah. it looks like a comic book in such a very it's like a oh thing something you're not gonna see anymore. Yeah, um, they somehow kept it dark, but also feel like a comic book at the same time. It's like kind of it's like spooky but whimsical yeah. in like a fun way. Like the uh the main Batman theme really captures that feeling. And it's Danny oh, Elfman really did so Danny well that. Oh, the thing is movies. That movie has such a really nice balance. It's not too far into Tim Burton that it feels, you know, really out of place. But it's also just enough that you'll feel, you'll just know it's Tim Burton who made it. Yeah, and I think the sequel kind of, it, it becomes a little too Burton-y. Like, uh, it, it's, <laughs> I think this one is like Batman with a Burton twist on it, where the second one feels more like it's a Tim Burton movie. And then he like threw some Batman characters in oh, there Batman without, on it. <laughs> without like um, there's not like hmm. a lot of the characters feel like characters that he created for the movie and then gave a yeah. comic book name later, which is yeah. fine. But yeah, I definitely prefer the first one. See, just look how much we could talk about superheroes right now. <laughs> except we decided not to. <laughs> yeah. Um, Morbius. <laughs> no. uh, Do not bring that up. That, I could not even get past the intro of that movie. I was actually bored out of my it's, mind. It's not great, but I think like the the big thing people would be interested in is yeah. all the modern MCU stuff. Which oh my gosh, 
for the most part, is just kind of saddening. I still don't think any of them are like... Uh, there's a couple that are pretty bad. Um, <laughs> I don't think they've quite reached as bad as DC got in their, like... Oh, dear. At their bottom, but it's yeah. getting scarily close. Like, I thought it would not mm-hmm. even remotely touch. And, like, yeah. a couple movies later... One quantum mania later, and I'm now shaking. I'm quivering. I don't know. I, the next one might be the, the one that sinks this ship. I think I got super duper depressed about it after seeing um, uh, Secret Invasion. I was just like... Oh, yeah. God, you, had, you have all this money. You have all these studios. You even dissolved a whole entire television studio. And yet you don't incorporate their work into this, this series. It's so I it's such a waste. I just delete the shows out of my brain because there's like a couple yeah. shows I like, sure, but yeah. I don't think they're worth it. I feel like the MCU show should have never happened. And oh, it same would be here. it would very simply be for the better. There's like Loki's a good one. I'd miss Loki, but mm-hmm. I I'd miss Moon Knight because he wouldn't get an adaptation really otherwise. Oh, I didn't Moon love it. Moon Knight the was show. amazing. Yeah. That was my favorite. Um, yeah, I didn't like the show yeah. very much, but I respect the adaptation. But like, I don't yeah. think those shows are worth worth it when Secret Invasion oh, and like yeah. Falcon and the Winter Soldier have completely killed <laughs> most hype. They, yeah, they just completely botched everything that they were they were working up for. Oh well, that's just the MCU nowadays. They they kind of, mm. I mean, they're slowing down too. It's it's okay. Like we're not getting as many MC movies as we did back in like phase three, but it's, it's also a little bit of a shame. Something I just kind of thought of, it feels like I, I doubt this is on purpose, but it feels like almost every superhero of color outside of black Panther has been pushed to TV shows. And it's really annoying. I know. they're They're not giving them the proper chance. Like, yeah, you, I feel like Miss Marvel would have been a great TV show. Uh, Moon Knight isn't normally, like, is in the comics white, but Oscar Isaac is not. But still, he's now in a TV show. Uh, Nick Fury finally gets a thing. It's a TV show. Uh, Falcon's first introduction as Captain America. It's a TV show. It's so interesting. That, I have I have to feel like it's a coincidence. But is it War Machine feels... going to get a TV show as well? Armor War, War Machine is getting it. I forgot about that. <laughs> it went, they like, turned into a movie. They turned that into a movie. Oh, are, are they turning they it turned into, into a movie? Okay, yeah. okay thank gosh. <laughs> thank gosh. I was a little scared there. Oof, that was almost racist for a second. Yeah, there's a Wakanda series. Isn't there a Wakanda series? They say Wakanda series. There is a Wakanda series to start. God <laughs> dang it. Uh, but yeah, that's... that's uh, that was an odd coincidence. <laughs> I, I feel like it has to be a coincidence, but also yeah. it might be might be a little bit of that Hollywood, oh, wait, a little sprinkle um, of that Hollywood racism. I got another one, Ironheart. Oh yeah, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I feel like I feel like a conspiracy theorist. It's all oh, dear. it's this all is... unraveling before me. <laughs> we're, we're gonna dig ourselves into the biggest hole ever. I mean. I don't really think so. What are pe- what are people going to get mad at us? Us complaining that Disney's probably kind of racist. I don't think that's like a surprise. <laughs> that's not a surprise. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's not. That's not like uh, cough, my jaw cough, isn't cough. hitting the ground. <laughs> cough, cough. Uh, Star Wars Episode Nine. Cough, cough. True. Um, but yeah, I <laughs> I don't think we have to get into that too much more. <laughs> but it is such a it's such a depressing topic, and I I so yeah. I so hope that James Gunn just absolutely obliterates the MCU where it stands. That'd be so funny. Yeah, I'm actually excited for that Superman movie. I, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm a. I'm a I'm like somewhat fanboy. okay. Uh, I'm a like Cavill fanboy. Okay, uh, you can't you can't move me from the DCEU. Good thing I've never seen Man of Steel or the new Justice League either. I will force you to watch for the entire DCEU just so we can see how good the the Snyder the Snyder arc is. It's crazy the movies that I've watched. I've watched Aquaman, I've watched Wonder Woman, I've watched The Those Flash and both Shazams and that's it. <laughs> that's Man, actually you are, so upsetting. There's so many holes in that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Have you seen the Suicide Squad? Like the James Gunn one? Have you... Slight snippets, but no. Oh, okay. dear, man. You are, yeah. That's, that's, James that's Gunn? crazy. Yes, I have seen that one. 
Oh, oh yeah, it didn't okay. do much for me. It didn't do much for me. I think that's that's my top one. That's my favorite of the DC movies of recent. I think um, honestly, it's definitely one of the stronger ones. Honestly, I have to say the same. I, yeah, I, got, I, like, I, I agree. I think like. Well, that's oh, how much. <laughs> you know, that's. <laughs> you guys, you could tell everyone this is basically how much we could nerd about about superhero movies. But yeah, we um, probably should switch topics before this is the entire podcast. Yeah, let's we're gonna Nathan, just... let's let Nathan nerd out about something else. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah um. Is... Next thing on this list is a is a really scary one because if you say the name, you basically summon me automatically. Mm-hmm, it's Tears mm-hmm. of the Kingdom, uh, <laughs> and it's DLC. So, uh, the idea was before, like before this, we are every any news about DLC at all. Dakota and I were planning to have a second episode about Tears of the Kingdom. Maybe talk about the DLC and talk about um, some things it could improve on. And then we get an interview from Famitsu, speaking to Aiji Numa, I think, who says that there are basically no plans for DLC. Okay, I'm a little doubtful about that. But then comes this Nintendo Direct. Okay, that's almost a, conf- a confirmation. And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, I guess we wait until Game Awards, but you know, at that point, I'd rather we finish the podcast first. Yeah. Honestly, you're so hopped up on Copium if you think they're doing one. I'm I'm convinced no more DLC. Nothing. That's the only the most they're doing do DLC. That's so based. That's so awesome. The the most they're gonna do is a free content update. And yes, they're gonna be so based if they do that. Because I mean I don't want to pay seventy (laughs) dollars and stack and stack DLC prices on top of it. That becomes like a ninety dollar game. Well, for Canadian prices, that's a hundred thirty or something. (laughs) Yeah. It's it's good. If I like, obviously won't change the gaming market because money yeah. is money. But mm-hmm. it's it's cool to see a game that's able to come out, be complete, and not have any DLC. <laughs> but but then but then you remember that the the whole game was based on uh, abund- overabundance of DLC ideas for Breath of the yeah, Wild. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I know people really want a hard mode, and I think that is the only thing that- they would add. Yeah, um, that is a and, textbook Zelda mode. They need to add it. What's What's really funny is if they put it in Nintendo Direct and they don't make it obvious that it's a, a new master mode or something. Yeah, people are gonna think it's, they're announcing DLC until they say it's not oh DLC. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I cannot wait for the threads on that. <laughs> well, there's an easy solution. They just call it free free DLC. It's either that or they just post a video saying new update. Uh, master mode coming today or something and they just don't put in a direct <laughs> it'll probably yeah it'll probably be some shadow dropped video and... yeah like a youtube video and a tweet yeah, yeah pull a late 20 or late 2020 early 2021 nintendo uh, i really <laughs> hated that era honestly but i'm gonna I, I think for the most part if the game's already like going to sell no matter what not having a ton of marketing is really cool. Like I know um, I've seen a lot of people online. I'm sorry, I'm just completely shifting the topic for a second. But uh, that's fine. I've seen people online complaining about like the lack of marketing for the new Spider-Man game. Like before, <laughs> before a bunch of like a, a bunch of trailers and stuff came out fairly recently. Yeah. And I'm so upset on the amount of stuff they're showing. I would. It would be so like I'm trying to avoid it to the best of my ability but man Same. i would so love to have not known that certain characters were in the game or how certain suits looked and it's yeah. I, I simply don't get the reasoning because it's not like it's not like a new trailer would get some joe schmo to be like oh now i'm buying spider-man too <laughs> he, he was buying it anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> And do people know that a game is a month away and usually marketing does not start until usually minimum two weeks ahead of the game's release? Yeah. Yeah, it's... they they got no reason to show they got no reason to show a partially un- incomplete game or something that's then, not representative. Yeah, like TV spots don't go out until a week before the game comes out. <laughs> like yep. I feel all they need to do is drop those nineteen inches of venom and just you're that's good. You're good. Let it ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a disgusting series of sentences. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, that amount of advertising is basically what kind of killed the expectations for Tears of the Kingdom. Um, because but that's still sold like okay, game it's it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because the second trailer for the game showcased a lot of stuff that we didn't actually get to see. Oh, interesting. Like, uh, well, most notoriously now, it's the the Sky Islands being so much more populated that with you know littered all over mm. the sky and whatnot. Uh, yeah, final project of the game we never knew until we actually bought the game because all the trailers hit it so well. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's, that's one for of the, the most that's... part good. That's... I think in specific situations like that, I can see how it's annoying and bad. Yeah. Um, because like when you're not properly representing how the final game looks, yeah. Um, that's not great. But also, I don't need to see characters that would be a nice surprise to see anyway. Like it's it's very strange. I bet there's other surprises in store for like Spider Man. But if I like, it feels like Wolverine. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be so weird. <laughs> I, I feel like it's like going into. I, I don't know. I'm just always pleasantly surprised going into the games and being like, "Oh, that super villain's in here. I didn't know that." Like if I, I went into you know like all of them. That's yeah, pretty much I, how I, there that's, might be a couple. That could be the reason why I enjoyed uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, quite a lot more than people did than most people did. Yeah, like I, I, was, I was surprised. Yeah, like uh, there was a lot of things in that game that surprised me, but it's mainly because I didn't actually watch anything from that game. Like nobody really talked about it. There was not that much marketing. It was just kind of the PS5 bundle type of thing. Yeah, like I got I'm... fairly lucky with. Um, I spent forever to get to the Batman Arkham games. Like the yeah. games were years old by the time I actually played them. But like mm -hmm. getting to Arkham Knight and not knowing what the side mission villains were, and slowly discovering, oh, I know that guy, or like. Oh, that's Riddler. cool. They put him in the game. Like, I, I knew Riddler would be in the game, but like, uh, Professor Pig, I didn't know he was going to be in the game. Oh, Firefly. yeah. I didn't know Firefly was going to be there. It was cool to discover, but there might still be characters that they don't show, and that would be cool, but I don't know. I feel like a lot of that, there's definitely some. There's one character in particular they showed off that I'm just upset by because. I would have read, like it feels it's, it was completely unnecessary and they didn't show anything outside of the fact that he's in the game. Yeah. Ugh. I think for me it's the story of Spider-Man 2 that's going to be the most interesting. And it was weird yeah. because I played the original when the PS5 came out and I knew I knew the basic story beats, I knew what characters they were in. I even knew uh like the climax pretty much ending of mm -hmm. the thing that happens at the end. I'm about to just say it because I'm pretty sure we've all played the original, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I finished it. Spoilers <laughs> <laughs> for anybody. You can get out now, uh, but come back in like a minute. Uh, uh, the, uh, Aunt May, she dies at the end. I, no! I knew that going at the end, yeah, and it still that. made me cry. Yeah. And it was crazy how good that, that all that kind of wrapped up. Like when yeah. uh, that when that game came out, I watched like a full playthrough of it on YouTube, and then played the game years later afterwards, and it still it still all hit. It's so like it's not the only games too. that have ever made me cry, and then that's crazy. Fair Sonic enough. at their yeah. best. That hit that hit harder than and then um her dying in No Way Home. <laughs> oh well, her dying in No Way Home was oh. kind of like oh that's 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 why if I speak <laughs> if I speak on No Way Home. Uh, didn't we already? Oh no, we didn't talk about. We it never did a video it. about it. <laughs> no, we well, talked about. We, specula we speculated it. We speculated yeah. on it, but we didn't really talk yeah. about the actual movie. I th we've talked about it off podcast, but plenty. Uh, Literally, that's going to be that's going to be way too much to talk about there. Yeah, no. <laughs> to wrap it up, bad movie. <laughs> I bad I think, movie. I think it's it's like it's really it's. Marvel Spider-Man at his worst until all the other characters that I like from previous movies show up, then it gets good. It's Spider-Man yeah. uh, crack cocaine. It feels incredible <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> but when you look back, you uh, just yeah. did drugs. I, He's like, oh, I did all that. I was now so... I like, now I feel like shit. Scared. Oh, I was so scared in the theaters when that opening showed up and I was like, none of the jokes were landing and I was like, oh no. Is this one oh, going to no. suck? 
and then my favorite green goblin man from my like one of my favorite movies of all time shows up and i'm like clapping i'm there i'm ready for it (laughs) it's like that one a tweet that went around with the guy in the painting he stands up in the crowd (laughs) (laughs) have you seen the rosario dawson version of that it's like the exact same thing but rosario dawson's just it's just like a picture of her doing the ex- I, it was like a weird photo shoot very really? strange picture yeah <laughs> fascinating <laughs> fascinating weird bit of twitter lore <laughs> how okay did, this how has gotten DLC pretty turn into, oh <laughs> turn into spider well and turn into movies we talked okay, about marketing we talked about, about we talked about marketing and we kind of moved back <laughs> to movies oh dear <laughs> gosh that's how that's how big that's how big of movie nerds we are Mm-hmm. I mean, we skip, uh, we completely skip Barbenheimer, and, and I know, I know, you two watched those movies. I didn't watch Oppenheimer. I did watch Barbie. Though. You did. You didn't watch Oppenheimer. That's I, I really wanted to. I didn't, I didn't even watch, watch either. It, but uh, there are too many movies coming out that I wanted yeah. to watch. Is it depressing that I saw basically the important ones? I, I went to the theater in June four times. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are crazy! Twice but for I... Spider Man. <laughs> Twice for Spider Man. Um, but yeah, the next topic on the list is the current state of Nintendo uh, Mobile. That's which, a really amazing segue, by the way. Yep, yeah, I'm just seamless, easy. Yep, just yep. quickly, quickly get off us, get us off that Spider-Man track before this is the before it's a Spider-Man podcast. So, um, the I actually don't know what this Nintendo, one means. So we're just talking about Nintendo Mobile games as a whole because they've been going up and down, uh, and Mario Kart Tour. Like Nintendo just announced that they're ending uh, content updates for that game, so now it's just going to be a regular mobile game with a generic racer game. Now, nothing, well, think, no, no live service. Cur- the the content from previous, uh, I don't know what you call them, seasons. I think that will yeah. uh, f- uh, flow through the shop slowly. It's not a like, flow through the shop. Yeah, it's not like they're just oh, stopping okay. support for that. So it's so. it's still it's just, microtransactions, but it's yeah. just we're not getting uh, we're just not getting a longer mobile like a longer life to it. It's not like uh, Fire Emblem Heroes, which is still breathing and actually going. I think crazy. it's like breathing. That is, it's it's like huffing as it's sprinting <laughs> across the planet. <laughs> it's not Usain Bolt. Exactly. <laughs> that thing I... somehow. That game somehow destroys every single other Nintendo Mobile game except for Dr- Dracalia Lost, I guess. But that one died also. That one I... lost battle. Hmm. I. The Mario Kart one's interesting because, like, yeah. if I'm if I'm gonna get back on my copium real quick, I feel like <clears throat> with the combination, I did. This is my first time hearing of the like stop support. I feel like yeah. with that slowing down and the last booster course stuff coming out. My hope, uh, copium, <laughs> take a big, big hit, big hit of copium here. <laughs> I think they're ramping up for a new Mario Kart to start the like whatever the next switch is. Cope, oh man, cope, that's a cope, really cope, cope, that's cope. a really crazy idea. I would have never thought of that. So much cope. I that's, that's a lot of copium there. <laughs> it is my big hit. My my don't own Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but own Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U hit of copium. <laughs> Honestly, I, I still feel bad for you. Like that was that was a terrible that was a dick move on their part. They just they just don't lower the prices and I don't want to spend eighty dollars in a game I already own. Well hey, it's kinda like it's kinda like buying the expansion the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack. They don't lower the prices depending on how many DLC you buy. I, I would have loved to play Bowser's Fury, but I'm not buying 3D World again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least they're not pressing it extra. They're not pressing it like 65 American. I I'm guess actually really <laughs> craving a 3D Mario game, and I might pick it up, but then I have Wonder Across like in a month. I'm like, mm, mm, I'll wait. Uh, I, mean, I mean, have you... Have you... <sighs> uh, to be I... fair, I think 3D World is like maybe my favorite 3D Mario game. Whoa! Hey, that I, I is a it. crazy take, but I you love, know what? I huh. can live with that. I can live with it's, that. It's fair. It's fair. I feel like there hasn't really been a bad 3D Mario though. Like I can respect most decisions. Like unless you say your favorite 3D Mario is Super Mario, uh, Super Mario 64 DS. Like I don't think there's wait. much. Wait, that game's coded. 
It's a good game. 64 DS is okay. It's just the D pad was literally the only reason it wasn't that great. Mm, fair, 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 fair. Mario 64, okay, well, Mario 64 DS is amazing emulated. <laughs> actually, I, I hated. I actually, I, actually, I hated the intro of that game. I didn't like how you played Yoshi instead of Mario, because I grew up with the N64 version. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's better just for the sake that the camera and controls work. Yeah. Yeah. They put some camera, camera with big quotation marks. Anyway, anyway, yes. <laughs> we are going way off topic. Um, Nintendo's really interesting with their mobile strategy, I guess. I guess you're right. Maybe they're working on another Mario Kart game or they don't want to take away too much content potential. Mm -hmm. But tours dying and or at least the content updates, the content flows die like dying. And their other games are kind of just there. Like they kind of just exist. Yeah for I marketing like purposes it might just be because i have like my blood hooked up to pokemon but yeah. i feel like pokemon go still gets substantial updates um i know uh, you're talking about like uh, every once in a while when like a new game comes out they'll do some stuff it's not like breaking records crazy um mm -hmm. i know you were talking about fire emblem before um yeah that's the opposite of pokemon my blood is not even remotely hooked up to that <laughs> i are they still updating that game? Like substantially? What, Fire, Emblem, Fire Emblem Heroes? Yeah. Yeah, sure. they recently got a new uh, they got a re like a whole new story expansion. Interesting. Recently. Okay. And then it's doing better than Pokemon. It's apparently doing better than Pokemon, yeah. I'm Making pretty sure Japan money. is carrying that game, but yes. Oh, okay. But what about Super Mario Run? Uh, uh literally <laughs> an update with Daisy and that's it. That was that's literally that's like a few just, years ago. It's yeah. Just there. <laughs> It literally it, just exists, mm -hmm. and they made it free. Now they made it. They made the full game free. Not too they long what? ago. Yeah, I think really? it was during the what? release of the the Super Mario movie, the the Super oh. Mario Bros. movie. Um, they they um, I think they just made the game free because they wanted to hype up the movie. Oh, Dakota, what about Animal Crossing Pocket Camp? Bro, I, I have more hours. That game I, like two months after. I <laughs> have more hours. More. I have more hours than you on that. I could actually, I could actually brag about that now. It's like um, there's not much to brag about when you're just tapping on animals yeah. the entire game. <laughs> yeah, it really is not saying much. Yeah, I gotta say, like you, the it's 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 kind of Animal Crossing, but they made it. They turned it into a mobile. Like they actually turned it into a generic mobile mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I it's mean, an inefficient, fair. uh, like town simulator. <laughs> It is with long screen, loading screens. The loading times are horrendous in that game. I still cannot like. I still end up spending like thirty minutes more than I want to in that game. <laughs> Interesting. I definitely thought that was going to be more of a Dakota centric thing, but I guess I was really wrong. Although nope, speaking I'm... of Dakota centric thing, uh oh, let's talk about the future of Amiibo post Sora. You completely screwed <laughs> over what I was about to say about the. Okay, no, stuff. fine. That was a I was, terrible. I was really, I was segue. really, really trying to feed a segue there so hard. No, but no, no you're continue, terrible continue at doing segues. segues. <laughs> um, anyone here remember me, Tomo? I'm kidding. That's, no. that's that's a terrible, that's a terrible game to bring up. Yes, me, uh, Tomo was great for ten seconds. Wasn't that wasn't that like just a smaller version of Tomodachi Life? Um. Not no, it had no. nowhere near as much uh, depth. Like not even close. You had your main character, and it was basically uh, a, a a you had a feed like Twitter mm -hmm. where you yeah. could do like daily journal entries, but everybody would see it. Uh, and you're, if you tap on the post, your character, your synth your synthesized voice, me would say it. What um, the heck? You could dress up your character. You could like. Photoshop okay, some cool. stuff and whatnot <laughs> on a photo you took. Um, I think that's kind of it, and that's kind of the reason it died. But I think yeah, I'm glad, it, I'm glad I wasn't that. there. You, wait, wait, wait. Tyler's it. never heard of me. I have Mitomo. never heard of Mitomo. You've never heard of Mitomo. No, that was like the first. That was the first Nintendo published one. Not not Pokemon, but the first Nintendo mobile game. Yeah, that was Where, the first when did with this... DNA. 20... Okay, well, team twenty sixteen. It was it's second 16. year of middle school, I remember. <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh, that, that is such a long time ago. That is that, that is insane. that takes me back. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. I I would not have even remotely touched that at all. 
I am considering writing a video about it because the fact that you don't know about it is crazy. Um, yeah, <laughs> the forgotten the forgotten me game on mobile. Yeah, it's like if maybe somebody has a copy of it, if it's even uh, playable. It's not. Oh, I mean, if it's online service based, it's not playable. Then I guess. Yeah, it's the game, I think the game just boots you. I guess I think the app just boots you out if you. Mm. You have to find like archival footage. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure I can. Yeah, it was pretty now, big at the time. Yeah, I yeah. heard it was pretty big, but I'm I, I kind of glad I missed out on it because it's not. It doesn't seem like it's that substantial. Yeah, mm. it wasn't that much. Remarkable, yeah. they never made a Nintendo's mobile game. I yep. know that's crazy. That's considering like they've done all this other stuff, and they've even asked the uh, Niantic to make Pikmin with AR technology and whatnot. Oh yeah, I forgot about that game. Yeah, Pikmin. <laughs> yeah, the game that. The game that Miyamoto yeah. really wants to push out constantly. <laughs> Do you still play that, Nathan? Actually, I stopped playing it because it okay. got way too far into my schedule. I also yeah. stopped playing Pokemon Sleep, by the way. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, that's understandable. Your phone can explode like... at any moment. My phone is a fire hazard at that point. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to kill it, especially because this phone. I don't want to kill the battery. It's, it's not remarkable. A, it's not how many Pokemon mobile games just have completely crashed and burned, except like because Pokemon Go did so well. Like <laughs> Pokemon Go did so well, they wanted to pump out so many other mobile games, and like none of them have Only had two. the same amount of longevity outside of Only maybe three Masters. of them have survived. There's, Master, there's yeah, Cafe Mix. Cafe oh, Mix is, is still going apparently. Masters is I've definitely never going. Heard anyone they're, they're, never, it. they're not. Uh, Jackie. Probably. I don't even know if he plays that. If he does, <laughs> he's never shown off. Shown enough on his Twitter. Uh, Unite is also another one because oh, oh yeah, well, I that. feel like people I feel like Unite's that. dying at least a little bit. It's big in the like, east. Mm. Yeah, people like people like MMOs in the east a lot more than here. Like it's not that big of an. Uh, I, I, that's a whole other rabbit hole. I don't like. I really just don't <laughs> have much to say about Pokemon Mobile, other than it's either. A hit or a miss. There was a Pokemon um, mobile game uh, where you like collect little Pokemon statues and they fight each other in like an arena that got oh, discontinued that, no, right that, before. That was Rumble. That was Rumble U yeah. though. That was on the Wii U. No, 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 no another no, one was, in mobile. Yeah, there's a oh. mobile one. Um, Actually, I think the mobile that was one like was more maybe fun. the one I've played the most outside of Go, and I think it was brought out back and executed right before Pokemon Masters came out because they were similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did, was, didn't that game also come out on Switch as well? Because I have a, I have it like I have something. I have a Pokemon Rumble game on my Switch. Uh, it wasn't Rumble to my. Oh wait, so. let's see. Pokemon Rumble Rush is a mobile game. Is that the one? Rumble Rush. Of? Yeah, that's that's yeah. when they killed eventually, and that was one. Well, that was one of the ones that Nintendo published. Is this the one I was looking? Oh yeah, no, Rumble this is Rush not on this. Yeah, Rumble on Rush mo mobile. That game was good. I like that. Pokemon Duel, I, that's what I'm thinking about. Pokemon Duel, I have I don't remember that. I don't know. It's Never it's like it, yeah, it's like little statues um wow. of Pokemon that would like almost like Beyblades smash against each other. Um oh, and it, okay. I just know it had like a bunch of cool models <laughs> that are never going to be able to see the light of day again. All right. Wait, check this for a segue if you have nothing else to say. Uh actually I was about to do, give a bit of a shout out to femc grim because i probably would have invited her on to talk about uh fire emblem heroes and dragalia lost because she has played those games extensively to death uh i think kaiser has also played those two games to death as well at least back in back in the high school days also yeah. a game i've never heard of uh, lost. So, that's understandable yeah. Yeah, that one was that one. Like, I don't know why Nintendo decided to debut that on mobile, but you know, it was a it was a cult classic. And uh, when they killed it, it was there's a lot of uh, backlash. Here's a segue. Okay. So Pokemon Rumble. Okay. Pokemon Rumble U was the predecessor to Amiibo because they had NFC figures that you could buy. That is in little true. Little gotcha packets. Do and you actually have any of those? I do not have any of them, and they are quite expensive. Uh, I'm, they used to I'm cost just people full, like they used to cost really cheap. Yeah, they were really cheap. Well, because they're in the mystery packets. That's true. I remember opening a Pokemon Rumble U and scanning uh, QR codes or something off of the internet to yeah. get mystery gift Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah Think about, anyways like, that goes to amiibo and now we're back to where tyler wanted to bring us earlier <laughs> oh, yeah. right amiibo so we kind of talked about amiibo a couple times already except until now yeah we literally did a whole episode on amiibo i think before most of the dlc for smash came out at this yep. point all the figures have been confirmed to come out sora will be out sometime next year yes sora and- and at this point, we're getting drips of Amiibo every few games. And but, I'm okay with that. But the scary... Th- side, breathe a sigh of relief. The <laughs> scary thing, though, is... Not too, not too much of a sigh not, of relief. I still want them to release them. Yeah, so here's the thing. Smash was basically the flagship franchise for Amiibo. Everything else was kind of... Well, okay, I guess maybe Animal Crossing as well, but they <laughs> focused more yeah, on... No way. NFC, they focused more on NFC than Amiibo. Yeah, but but after Smash, like, is there really any guarantee for any kind of amiibo to come out? Uh, like, I think with Tears of the Kingdom, they definitely drastically re- reduced the numbers there compared to Breath of the Wild, and I've, I've like with all these other new games coming out, I'm a little scared that we might like potentially lose them. It's it's kind of weird because. Around yeah. the world, they in each marketplace around the world, they yeah. sell drastically differently to each other. Like in mm-hmm. the US and Canada, they are basically never on shelves unless it's an unpopular game. Like, oh, I'm so I'd say every that. Smash one usually stays on shelves about a month. Like the Pokemon yeah. Trainer ones, they stayed about a month. Um, yeah. But uh, Pyra and Mithra, they were gone within the day. <laughs> uh Kazuya, that was pretty easy to find. So it's all has can, to do you, with the character. Uh you can bet Sora's gonna disappear instantly. Yeah, exactly. An um, hour within release. But then you if you look at screenshots of any store in Japan, specifically like uh Yodabashi Camera, which is basically just a Best Buy uh for yeah. Japan, or any of the uh Nintendo stores, they have yeah. a, a lot of stock of mainly Splatoon. Uh, Mario and a few of the Smash Brothers ones. And it's oh man, weird! I um, remember going to the Nintendo World Store in New York, and I remember seeing their stock, the huge stock of the Guardian Amiibo. Yeah, mm. that was and, honestly crazy. But then when you look at Europe, they get weird patterns in their restocks of old figures. <laughs> Like, right what now, Nintendo is actually changing the packaging of all of the back of the Amiibo. Um, oh, yeah, so they don't have to. Yeah, so they don't have to keep updating the back of the ba- back of the packaging, so it keeps saying uh, works for You can use this on 3DS. Wii U! <laughs> yeah, Wii U, Switch, and then they're going to probably say whatever the next one is. So they're future-proofing, of course, which is fully understandable. Um, and there's currently a rumor that a bunch of the Smash ones are going to be re-released. But I don't see a reason for that in the future, unless maybe for the new Switch they release a Smash Ultimate Ultimate Edition where it includes all the DLC or something. <laughs> Ultimate Ultimate Edition. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if I can buy that. Edition, but I, there's no reason it, they should be remaking old figures at this point. And I don't even know if North America is going to get any because for the past like four reprints, they've not North America has not gotten any old product reprint it so sad if if you could get a character amiibo fied like if you could if you could craft your own from like a game of your choice which one would you pick well that is a hard that is question, a tough question okay. there that if, is pretty okay tough. if we want to go pokemon wise um i want a plush snorlax similar to mega yarn yoshi where the yeah. amiibo is on Ooh. his foot I actually um, kind of forgot that they don't do that. <laughs> the yeah, Pokemon exactly. just doesn't get one. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, or they just, if they want another giant line, you have mini amiibo for every single Pokemon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that, I yeah. mean, if they're like 10 yeah. bucks each, I will happily give, what's the math there? $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's very interesting that like, um, some, I, I like Mario Kart hasn't gotten more. Like I, I'm kind of shocked that they haven't kind of done the same thing with like booster course, like the new characters they add. Like um, 
because it doesn't i mean maybe just because there isn't an amiibo it just feels like the hype isn't there for characters like funky kong or people just being added <laughs> back into the kong. into the game that might just be because i was more involved in smash bros than i am mario kart but it is it is weird that they're they like replaced uh smash dlc with mario kart dlc but then didn't shift over amiibos to kind of do the same but i guess yeah. they weren't making amiibos for mario kart in the first place at this point like early amiibo was supposed to be a toys to life um and they kind of did that with smash brothers where you can have your own uh cpu battle for you and then mm. kind of 2018 ish kind of around the release of uh the what's it called samus returns is where they started to, to experiment with this is a figure that will unlock basically a feature in the game so i'm pretty sure the hard right. mode was locked behind the metroid amiibo and then with yep. the skyward sword amiibo something was locked behind that i don't remember what it Tele- was teleportation anywhere they, oh, least, that uh, seems like intense yeah no you if you want more intense twilight princess hd they unlock a whole whole ass dungeon there mm, yes there you go and that's around the same era um yeah and now it's kind of just become, hey, you can buy this, you'll get an extra item or cosmetic mostly. Um, even yeah. with the the all the Tears of the Kingdom ones, it's all cosmetic, or you get some just a random bunch of items, which don't really mean much in the long run. Yeah, um, it is interesting. With, what's the I... new? I don't remember the characters. One of them, Noah, right? And what's the other one? <laughs> what are you talking about? Which characters are you talking the about? The new Xenoblade Three. Uh, Noah, Noah, and Mio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe yeah, they yeah. just get armor, but I couldn't tell if it's like cosmetic or just like a cool looking armor. Mm. Uh, but well, anyway, as we already know, the... basically just a bonus <laughs> item and they're bonus still item. high quality. They're getting a little bit more expensive nowadays, um, but I'm OK with that because they don't make as many. But mm-hmm. I'll keep buying them until the day they say, hey, we're not making any more. And then I'll try to <laughs> get all of them. Well, good it's... luck, because like trying to get all of them is a huge investment. Yeah, well, the most expensive yeah. one is a is a plain square, and it's five hundred dollars. So, <laughs> it's not, wait, 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 like, are you talking about the box boy box? Yeah, box boy exactly. one. The quibble. Oh my gosh! How I, in the world? I mean, it's just like a three DS game that no one bought. It's exclusive yeah, to true. Japan as well. And so they would, never reprinted it. it. They never reprinted it when Box Boy Box Girl came out. No. Um, it is a little interesting how amiibos have been sidelined like a little bit. It almost feels like they're just um, they're it's like a, a layover almost from like Wii U era, where it feels like a lot yeah. of the amiibos being made are four games that got amiibos in the Wii U era. <laughs> like uh, Splatoon gets new amiibos because Splatoon yeah. one got new amiibos, so you might as well continue it. Smash got new amiibos. Um, Xenoblade didn't have any Wii U stuff, so I have no argument there. Um, but it's well, I had a spin off. Yeah. I had a spin off. So I want to remember. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like big, big Nintendo games that come out will get an amiibo. But like the ones that have more, that have like lines rather than just like a special one off amiibo, feel like layovers from Wii U, which is weird because I feel like they, in every other sense, they've been trying to make you forget that that ever came out. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, Monster Hunter still gets amiibo with pretty much every major nintendo release so oh. i think that i think that's i think that's capcom just ask or capcom or nintendo are asking for something like that just just to do something crazy yeah it could be another japanese thing kind of just seeping into the west which mm-hmm. is why we probably don't get much of that they love figures there and it they love collecting things so i'm sure yeah. it's just something to do with that i also wouldn't yep. be surprised if it ends up if it is a capcom thing because i feel like if it was a nintendo thing you'd probably get like one amiibo for every major release because i feel like if you're doing one amiibo per monster hunter but not like paper mario it's a little weird yeah well Mm -hmm. we're getting three amiibo per monster hunter you get a cat you get a dragon and you get like something else wow (laughs) so they've been doing that i think the past two or three monster hunter games yeah there's one thing for certain yeah hey if there's one thing for certain we're probably never going to be using Amiibo for Toys to Life anymore. <laughs> Which is sucks. So Skylander much. 6. It's they are the, they are the Amiibo support. <laughs> they are the last surviving, the last surviving line of Toys to Life accessories, and they're not even used for Toys to Life anymore. 
You know they're you know they're uh, remaking the original Skylanders, but they're gonna remove all the Toys to Life support. What? I'd actually be fine with <laughs> that. To be insane? honest with you, I'd actually be fine because of the fact that it costs so much money. To I every, I think I'm two Skylanders Skylander. away from completing the original set. And imagine all that plastic is for nothing if they remake and the game. And if they remake, the... <laughs> well, okay, um, it was kind of like it was kind of like Starlink. It was kind of like Starlink when they did the whole Joy-Con, um, the whole Joy-Con accessory, uh, Joy-Con grip thingy. Oh, you yeah. didn't need it, but you already had all the characters. You already had, you already had Star Fox, and you already had the other guy. I, I don't even know the main character's name there. Who does? You didn't need them. <laughs> yeah, you, I... you don't even need them. You just select your characters and your ships there you go you don't need to attach the the r-wing onto your controller <laughs> i have that on my shelf and i every time i look at it i'm like yeah that existed <laughs> i was like i want to play it but then i'm like oh yeah i forgot it's a it's a bore it's that's just a ubisoft game no that but kind of like the weirdly best star fox game that isn't star fox <laughs> yeah it is the best star fox game that isn't star fox but then i remember it's also a ubisoft game it doesn't it, matter <laughs> it was kind of <laughs> fits back to that previous thing i was saying about nintendo switch games like in the future are they going to be like which ones won't be remembered and i have to imagine starlink will be like a 2040 youtube video like nintendo switch games you forgot about the well, star fox game you've never played <laughs> yeah now, here's the thing though i think starlink did get a lot of publicity because it was like the switch version especially just because it was the only one with Fox, McCloud, and all the other Star Fox characters. It had the Ubisoft Rabbids effect. It mm. did, and they it was a it was a, about. a neat... and then they tried to capitalize on, and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it was at the level. This crossover was at the level of Dante in Shin Megami Tensei Three, as in <laughs> you know they'd slap on the logo Dante featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. <laughs> Except there was nothing. There's nothing really there to keep it memorable. People just—it's like Donkey Kong and Bowser in Skylanders Supercharged. Yeah, they existed, yeah. but there's no nothing catchy to actually keep them mm -hmm. notable in the franchise. I have to say, I think my biggest hatred from the Toys of Life genre is that there's a bunch of Lego figures that I'd so love to get my hands on that oh. are now absurdly expensive because what, you Lego have... <laughs> Lego Dimensions. <laughs> yeah, like Lego Sonic. I'd, I'm never gonna play the game again, but like, yeah, Lego Sonic. That'd be cool to have. Lego, um, Lego. Oh, shoot, how can I not remember his name? Um, I think they had an Mission game. Impossible had a yeah a, a figure. Ethan Hunt. Yeah. If you want, I don't know why you would, but that's uh, there. What about that protagonist it, from Portal from the Portal games? Yeah, Dude, I hell. wanted the Portal one so badly. <laughs> <laughs> and the, our local Walmart had it on the shelf, and I'm like, ah, thirty dollars for a figure and a little thing. I'll wait a bit. And I took the gamble. They didn't realize that they would just pull it off the shelf after a while. And, and the so. game, and then the game died. The game died <sighs> so. Like, there's just so many things. I'd be like, oh, that'd be cool to own. And then you look it up, and it's like a million dollars, or like Gizmo. And the, this is why I really made an original song for GLaDOS, brought her voice actor back. I really want to just play those levels. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think... That's how far that's how far we've gone with Toys of Life. That's just depressing. To be fair, they could release Lego Dimensions as just a normal Lego game without Toys of Life, and I would probably buy it. I'm gonna be I honest. would probably get it too. Because there's a, there's a bunch of there's just a lot of stuff that I never would have had access to originally. Dude, they should add online multiplayer to that game. Oh my goodness, yeah. that'd be so fun. <laughs> I oh uh, yeah, that'd be crazy. Don't... Oh, I <laughs> this could be a video on its own, but the amount of like I feel like small tweaks that Lego games could just do, and they'd be like peak video gaming experiences, but they just simply don't do it. Is so oh. <laughs> cough cough Lego worlds. <laughs> Lego cough, World. Cough, oh, the Skywalker, Skywalker saga. saga. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was such a disappointment. What a disappointing but... game. Oh man. Huh. You know, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad though that like Toys Life kind of died because it was kind of getting a little congested there. Don't you think? Yeah. We had, we had Sky. We had way too. We had so many Skylanders at that point. I was like, what? Four games? I think no, mm -hmm. three, three or four games. I think Trap Team was already out by then. Um. Yeah. And then they. And then what? Disney starts to jump into the fray with Disney Infinity. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. I was like, 
Disney's not going to do well, and I was pretty much right. They they failed. They failed think... really horribly. Amiibo are cool because they stuck around. Skylanders are cool because they popularized it. And Lego Dimensions was cool because it's like an actual thing that I would use outside of the game. And then uh, anything else yeah. that came with it is just plastic that is never going to be that that just pollutes the air. Yeah, it's really just it's really just the Amiibo now that are just that have a lot more value to them. Mm -hmm. And maybe the Skylanders. Well, whenever but, they announce know. the next switch or next console, it better have an NFC tap. They probably will. Area. They probably will. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's not really like I wouldn't. I would imagine that they probably keep like backwards compatibility as a maybe priority because of the huge consumer base on the Switch. Yeah, like I feel like you get rid of the Wii U support for the Switch because no one bought the Wii U. Um, yeah. But like and, Switch yeah. Two or whatever is definitely going to need. A, a good some form good. of backwards compatibility and mm -hmm. with I know why they don't do it mind. like I, I know why companies don't do it but man if there could just be like if I could just play all the old games on one console that'd be so cool but then they yeah. can't sell, you can't sell a million billion versions of the same game so like mm -hmm. I get it but also <laughs> that, that was pretty much what they that's pretty much what the 3DS and Wii U were almost they yeah. almost became the all-in-one console for Nintendo. I think if if I was like a conscious adult when the Wii yeah. U was happening, I probably yeah. would have spent so much money on it. Yeah, even with backwards compatibility existing. Mm-hmm. Like if, backwards if... compatibility, I okay. I was thinking about this earlier. And yeah. You know the rumors that uh, Nintendo was showing off the the second Switch. With yeah. a Breath of the Wild 60 frames running good. That was that's with with fast demo. load times. Yeah. yeah. What if they pull a Sony and kind of Xbox and oh, you can no. play uh you can play oh, the original it. Switch games, but to up res them is an extra ten bucks. Damn it. Oh. Well see that's or that free with Nintendo much... Switch Online membership. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Oh, <laughs> See, Nintendo's gonna do that even if the upgrades were minuscule. Like, if we were talking like Horizon Zero Dawn PS5 upgrades, oh, which was free, which was free, and they charge money for that, <laughs> they charge extra money for that. I feel you know like what? Screw them. I feel I'm like still playing original. Such a missed opportunity. Like, I hope with the next Switch, um, probably won't happen. But if they yeah. just kind of get themselves together with the Nintendo Switch Online. Um, it'd be so nice because, like, the way with, with PlayStation, like Xbox um, Game Pass is obviously like the mm -hmm. premier everything. But even what the PlayStation has is pretty good. Like um, the big expensive version where you can play old games, which is cloud yeah. streaming, which cr cringe uh, sucks. I don't <laughs> have good internet. I can't play half of them. Yeah. Uh, but like. I feel like I would drop that so quickly if Nintendo just had a version of that. Like, I would, I much, I care so much more about like going back and playing like Paper Mario or um, Mario Sunshine or something, like games I haven't played before. I care about that yeah. so much more than going back and playing like Ape Escape 3. <laughs> that's the thing i think nintendo does have that and they've been tr slowly building up to a library and they pretty much have a pretty strong library if you want to play the old games like but of course they don't, era. <laughs> of course they don't want to do it instantaneously because they want to catch as many people they, as they want exactly they want middle, if you yeah min maxing that's exactly perfect the, um, the day they finally get that gamecube slash uh no, they're never gonna, they're support, never gonna do that and I would I would spend so much money. Do you know how much you know how much you know how much money they value GameCube games? Like they are they consider GameCube games yeah. They consider GameCube games to be like the modern the baseline modern standard. So any GameCube game yeah, they're remaking them. So any GameCube game in their minds is sixty dollars American today. At least you know, like 
discounting inflate like no inflation <laughs> whatsoever they're not gonna they're not gonna be putting it any lower than msrp that's old man gonna, shakes fist at sky capitalism like, like okay maybe 50 dollars <laughs> us depending on depending on like how big the original gamecube game was but you know at the baseline it's going to be the same price as a switch game it's so annoying because it makes emulating so unbelievably d- tasty tasty and enticing <laughs> or it makes modding my Wii U so enticing as well because that's yeah. one of the actual GameCube games natively. I, I feel like the the Wii U they fumbled the bag so hard they just had to like open that GameCube pocket and then the Switch did really well so they're like oh <laughs> we can <laughs> we can drip feed. <laughs> yeah, it's like they experimented with two GameCube games and they're like oh this is a really good idea people really like it when we put three mario games in a limited time release mm-hmm. let's do it more <laughs> and then two years later wait. we're gonna oh. make two of the rpgs <laughs> that was actually surprising i was you know i never actually expected Nintendo to do that because they're really they're really usually stingy with like the same series type of thing and they review they only release like one game per year but this is a bit of a shocker Honestly, if all the 99 games stayed around, which I think Mario was the only one that was discontinued, I feel like that's Pac-Man. like... No. Pac- was Pac-Man, Pac-Man was... Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Pac-Man was also... <laughs> oh. like, I feel like if those just stayed, like, I could still play them. That would be, like, a fun, yeah. like, collection of games to play back-to-back. But yeah. they just they just took it out back. Wasn't there another you know, 99 game? Uh, no, just that's it. Tetris, Tetris, Pac-Man, Tetris, Mario. Tetris is still alive. Yep, Tetris and is going And F-Zero. Strong. And F Zero yeah, came out, and people people love it. Yeah, that's all. That's that's it. I must have they never made a Zel- <laughs> They never made a Zelda one. Not yet. And I don't think they're gonna make it at all. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't. That'll never work. <laughs> That'll never uh, work. Like I think the right most now. first the Zelda most is already a big open world, and that's like one big step to making it Fortnite. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know how <laughs> where we drop in boys? Choose a tile. Boys. Oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh. That- <laughs> I I feel like you just you can just turn first Zelda game into Fortnite like weirdly easily. I feel like you just yeah. have to add new weapons, like add some more modern Zelda weapons into like a more in like an NES one style. NES one, what am I saying? An NES style, <laughs> and <Yeah>. um, <laughs> and like I feel like you just you just make Fortnite, but it's Zelda, and that goes crazy. <laughs> Uh, you know how much I hate PvP in Zelda. That just does not work as well. But it would be so fun. <laughs> the games are not designed so well. The mechanics of Breath of the Wild are not good for PvP. Contrary well, you can to what tweak people it say. a little bit. But let me yeah, say I this. don't want. Was F Zero made for another ninety nine people? No, no, no. Was Mario that, made for thirty four more was... people? Look, no. Mario. Actually, okay. Let's be fair. Mario. They all they did was take Mario and remove hit. Uh, what player collision? And that was I it. Guess. Was yeah. Pac-Man and meant F- for ninety eight more people? I actually, know. yes. Actually, yes. Because you know how much Namco experiments with Pac-Man already. <laughs> is. I, I think like Zelda. Even if it's not direct battle royale, if it's like you can hurt other players, but it's like first one to beat a specific dun- like. Maybe only one of the dungeons in the map are open or something. I'd rather they do Dungeon Rush for sure. And like you can just there is PvP in it, but like the goal isn't to be the last one standing. It's like to beat Ganon or something. Get the Triforce. I don't I don't care. But I feel like that's fairly (laughs) easy to do. Like that's that feels like a something that I'm surprised hasn't happened yet. But who knows? Maybe next Zelda anniversary. In five years. Yeah, five years. Five years. In five years. (laughs) Yeah. Well. I don't know well, if that's I mean, gonna be. It doesn't have to be a big number anniversary, but maybe like. Nope, nope, because four is a really a un- forty, and four is a really uh, monkey number, so we don't want to. Oh, true. Yeah, unless 39. you want thirty-nine. <laughs> thirty-nine. No, you go to forty. You put like Ganon everywhere or something. I feel like it doesn't have to be like a big number, but you can just be like, "Hey, it's Zelda's anniversary. Here, have a new thing." Like it doesn't have to be. You really a... think you really think they're gonna do that with the successor? when they're going to be focusing more on trying to win over third-party games. Yeah. We can hope, we can dream for the next Switch to be amazing and awesome and goaded, but it probably won't happen. It will just be pretty good and then have a bunch of the same faults that aren't changed whatsoever. That's (laughs) the thing. How far behind is it going to be? 
I feel or like I feel like it might even if it's like technically if all like the the mechanics inside are to par somehow and it's like portable and it's amazing and it's awesome, I feel like all like the business side decisions that Nintendo has just <laughs> kind of fumbled over the years aren't going to be fixed. I they're feel just like going to be <laughs> min maxing. You know for sure that that eShop is not going to have music. <laughs> I know for sure they're going to keep using that damn browser eShop instead of making a separate app for it. Dude, they make, they just pull an apple. They're like, we designed an incredibly new intuitive design for the eShop. And then they, all they did was add music. <laughs> <laughs> if they add music, hey, at you least... know it's going to be the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? Off. Nintendo fans are hungry. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time, I actually have one good say, one good thing, one good thing to say about Apple this time compared to Nintendo. <laughs> they actually, they actually change. I guess USB-C, that is true. USB-C charging on iPhone. They, choose, they change a lot. <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> That's you know what? I to say with the most recent release, <laughs> iPhone 15 actually is crazy, crazier than any of the changes Nintendo's made. Well, I, yeah, they do it yearly, and Nintendo has been seven years late. <laughs> not only that, but they actually they actually did something this time. They didn't just release the same phone again with slightly beefed up hardware. Um, weird random question to just throw out there. Uh, yeah. Of all like the weird Switch successor names that have been thrown at the wall, yeah. um, I don't. Which one? Which one are you? What team are you? Like what? Super what Nintendo. Have you heard? S- Super Nintendo Switch. Ooh. I am also on Team Super Switch. I have not. I don't think I've heard that one. That's that's actually pretty good. I I asked the question hoping I'd get an answer that I could also latch onto because I don't have a good answer, <laughs> and I think I can latch onto that one pretty well. Yeah, it, I think it, it works well. Pretty well that it's it's better than its previous one. It's a but new it's thing, gonna, but, but also you can play people. the other games. Yeah, would they want to like... do Super again? Because they did it for the SNES. It works. Super works. Yeah, it, works. it makes the most sense. It's better than name adding a second like. Uh, well, okay. At least with the Wii, at least this time there isn't really any accessories that are that are branded like Switch, Switch. Uh, I don't know. Switch speaker, Switch microphone, Switch. Yeah. Uh, switch wheel. They they didn't do the same thing. They they they're not following the Wii with the Wii's accessories. Um, so, you know, there's less of a risk to add a, uh, gimmick key subtitle mm-hmm. to a successor console, but at the same time, it's probably better that they use a, they use a better, they use a subtitle that actually indicates it's a better version of it, rather than just adding an arbitrary letter to the name. But also mm-hmm. indicating that it's basically a new generation. Yeah. Because they have to make that distinction. Um, they can't call it Pro either. Yeah, I have a theory about Pro actually. Because the Pro controller is called a Pro controller, if they release yeah. uh, a Nintendo Switch Pro, then it'll be, they'll have to rename the Pro controller. If, Nintendo Switch Pro Pro controller. <laughs> because <laughs> of that patent that they released uh, yeah. on the new sticks. If they oh. because you, if they have liquid in them, you can't put liquid yeah. in a Joy-Con. That's they're not going to do that. That's, no, I don't yeah. think it's possible. But they can do that with a Pro controller. So Pro is out of out of the question. They're not going to call it the Nintendo Switch Pro because then they would have to call the controller the Nintendo Switch Pro Pro controller. Yeah. <laughs> what are they going to call it though? Featuring new sticks for the Nintendo Switch console. <laughs> Uh, that's, to that's play with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch console, and you know, oh my gosh, just keeps well, no, you can't you can't say console. You got to say system. A system. <laughs> and then on the bottom it says uh, the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass is not included. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm gonna be so disappointed. No, wait, it's a Mario <laughs> gonna... Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for Nintendo Switch systems. <laughs> <laughs> for the Nintendo Switch, for the Nintendo Switch family of sis- uh, the Nintendo Switch family <laughs> of systems, mm-hmm. not including Nintendo Switch Lite because you can't take the controllers off. <laughs> hey, at least you could connect wireless controllers to it. There's so many caveats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's just Nintendo of America for you. Yeah, you turn way. the you turn it around on the back. It's like other Mario games include New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Either way, I'm betting on Super Switch. I think it's very Same strong, here. has alliteration. Super... Hey, it also goes it also goes really well with their recent branding, like Super Nintendo World, for example. That is true. I I think yeah, I, it's never gonna happen, but oh if they fix those Joy Cons, please. They're never gonna, they're never gonna <laughs> they're fix They're never those gonna do it. But nope. man, even I I feel like the if they, if they released it and like they just fully just revamped those stupid controllers. Yeah. And just because like not only do they break, not only do they drift. Yeah. They ugh, they're just so they're by far the least comfortable Nintendo controller to hold. But you and know, here's like, the ugh, here's the thing, thing though. Nintendo really dug themselves a hole when they said they're going to be when they when they were kind of required to do free repairs after the many class action lawsuits. Yeah, this and is suit. how the heck do you release a new controller like that and not expect people to demand it to go for free because they're going to use the same argument that these controllers are defective? Yeah, I just if they release new Joy Cons buttons. specifically, that's gonna that's gonna screw everything up. If they release a new controller that's similar to Joy Cons, maybe they could get around that. But mm -hmm. you didn't hear that from me. You didn't hear that from me. I miss the D pad. I miss the real D-pad, by the way. I'll, I I, miss... <laughs> you know what? They need to fix their D-pad on their on their controller because that Switch Pro controller D-pad is garbage. Mm hmm. It's so like, upsetting. Every it time, is really upsetting. Every time I go from like the um any Joy-Con to like yeah. my USB GameCube controller, it's such yeah. a, like a night and day experience. The Switch buttons, it feels like I. I don't know if I've said this on the podcast or this was outside the podcast, but um, it feels like they put silencers on the buttons. It's so annoying. I want a nice click, but it feels like it feels like there's little suppressors on it. You want a nice switch click. I want a nice switch click, please. <laughs> Viewers, after realizing the podcast is ending. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Great way to great way to segue to the ending. <laughs> to say the title, roll credits. <laughs> yeah. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I don't think that was the song that was chosen by our community. So. No, we actually have a different song. Uh, actually, I actually don't have a little list right here, but um, I think Dakota, you have the song, right? Uh, I don't have it up right now, but it's from Fall Guys. Ooh. It is from Fall Guys. I only think I know you... one song from Fall Guys. <laughs> That's also another game we never talked about. <laughs> that is true. We didn't talk... I didn't play it very much. Did oh, you play I, Fall Guys? I... I bought it the week it released. I paid a you full bought... 30 bucks. And oh. I'm, I got scammed. You oh. definitely got scammed. I, and you know what? I, I hated never... it. <laughs> it was oh, not God, honestly. I... I think once they... I don't know if they added it yet, but the fact that they added, or they are adding, the fact that you can make your own horses is kind of awesome i believe they have added that yeah that's been out for like a year i think yeah uh, that's a pretty i'm not gonna play the game i'm, it I'm just not didn't it strike me i just don't think i like i think i've with the amount of battle royales that have come out i think i've just come to the realization i just don't like playing online games <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> i just i just don't like or like i can play online games but i don't like competitive online games just at all you just like the pve stuff me. pve's fun oh, uh wait. Player games are fun but just yeah. you wait until there is going to be some pvp game in the arkham series have fun <laughs> pokemon 99 gets released and i'm just thoroughly addicted oh gosh <laughs> yeah it's really just a remake of that browser game that everybody likes what is it called <laughs> pokemon showdown pokemon oh showdown. don't get me started pokemon showdown is the perfect <laughs> is the perfect mobile game that they've never made <laughs> it's you literally just make make pokemon showdown into an like don't because it's an awesome fan project that i don't want taken down by nintendo but like if you were to take it down Please just make like a mobile game that is Pokemon Showdown, and I, I don't care if I have to oh. open loot boxes to get Pokemon. If it makes you, if it makes I, oh you no. feel, hey, if it <laughs> makes Pokemon you feel better, gotcha game. 
<laughs> if it makes if it makes you feel better, Nintendo killed uh, the Mario Battle Royale and released a Mario Battle Royale themselves. Yeah, and they also oh. did it with Samus Two remake. <laughs> they 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 killed the Samus Two fan remake in favor of an official one. Nintendo I... killed the fan project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so it's so mad. It, like I don't. Oh. I'm just you thinking can, about it now. Can talk, I could open can be... like a loot box and get a Pokemon. Open a loot box, get like a competitive item. I don't. I don't care that I'm spending money. I'm just playing Pokemon and having a good time. And it's insane they haven't capped. I feel like I'm not the only one who's like brain rotted in the same way. I feel like that's such a money printer, and like it, you can you can keep doing it forever because competitive Pokemon doesn't die. If they do it in the same way, and like Genshin and Honkai Star will do it, where. Oh, you get there's a banner. There's one Pokemon that everybody wants, and then you get a yeah. bunch of other ones, random ones. But if you pull, you only get this batch of uh, Pokemon. And then every week or two, they release a new batch, and then that'll probably since there's at least a thousand Pokemon plus whatever two hundred in the next few years. Yeah, they'll they survive until the end of days. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I feel like. Po you just do that and you do if you do like the marvel snap method where all the microtransactions are for cosmetics and stuff like you yep. just get like different poke you get like unite costumes or if you're going full marvel snap um say like it's competitive pokemon but like the pokemon are card art or whatever so you can get guest artists to draw art for specific pokemon i don't know either Dude, way you can just rip all the art from tcg yeah i know it's, it's oh it'd be so good It'd be such a good game, even if I'm spending money on um, Pokemon loot boxes and I get like my third barrel in a row when I just want Landorus tea. I would <laughs> I'd be having such a good time spending literally all my money. They would have alternate like versions of Charizard, Charizard Y, Charizard X, Shiny Charizard. Ashes I know. Charizard. <laughs> it's so frustrating that this isn't a thing. <laughs> Oh, that'd kill me. <laughs> it's such an easy money printer. It's it's such an. In oh, yeah, uh, I'm I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's I your pitch for. That's your pitch for a new Pokemon mobile game. Mm hmm. It doesn't even have to be a mobile game. It could probably it's, just be. It doesn't even have game. to. It, oh yeah, it could be. Yeah, I Masters forgot they're also on PC. It's well. literally like licking that idea. It's right next to it. It is it's close. within, arm, it's really it's within close. arm's reach, but they decided to change the Pokemon battle format for some reason. <laughs> well, okay, I guess they wanted to kind of avoid the whole gambling aspect because, uh, you know, people are a little, um, people don't How want do you get kids. The characters? I thought that is a gotcha game. It is kind yeah. of a gotcha. It it's, is a kind of a gotcha. Got it's just... They, uh, did they remove, like, percent, like, they, I don't think there's, like, percent chances maybe with attacks and stuff. Like you can't get confused or some and stuff the like heck? that because it's, it's like a weird because well, how it works is you have like one po each po trainer is like one Pokemon and then those Pokemon have like one <laughs> attack. It's like it's practically like you know those Star Wars or like Marvel has kind of one where it's just like you're you have like characters and they just kind of automatically fight each other. That's how they they did it. Which is so frustrating because you have a battle system right there that I think, for the most part, works well on a mobile format. It's like, like it's not like you don't have to dumb down Hearthstone. People enjoy Hearthstone, and like yeah. Pokemon is similar to a card game in like the sense that it's a strategy. Like it's something you can spend a while thinking about your turn in either of those games and it doesn't hinder a mobile experience but i said i'm gonna stop talking so i'm gonna stop talking <laughs> well it was a, actually it was a pretty good game pitch to be honest i <laughs> well, like, like I, I pokemon has a lot of potential it's just i feel like they're going in the wrong direction sometimes with their spinoffs oh like they're never I, really i agree agree i vouch i vouch for this well, yeah, it's only like because they, they try to hit different markets. If you're going to hit the market every single time, you're going to bleed somebody dry. But if you get the puzzle people for like a cafe mix, now you're going to bleed those people dry. But they will yeah. never get dry. You, you stop. Oh. I feel like mobile <laughs> games kind of killed the Pokemon spinoff because like Gen Five came about and mobile games were less. Like it wasn't widely known around that time that you put a game on mobile and you get a million dollars. Um, 
actually probably a closer to a billion if I'm being honest. Uh, we get multi-million dollars for just making a, a mobile game that hacks your brain. So instead, yeah. they're making like weird experimental games on the DS that three people buy and like remember for the rest of their lives. And now all we get for Pokemon spinoffs are Mystery Dungeon, Snap, and like a million mobile games. I <laughs> think I'm attached to the word a million today. It's not. I, I've said a lot. Yeah, but I feel like that's a that's a topic for a future video. And right, if, you got yeah, this we far, if you got if you got this far, you you get a sneak peek, I guess, at my thought process. <laughs> you will find, yeah, you'll get a sneak peek of what our game pitches would sound like. This is also a topic that we kind of would have talked, we, we kind of would have talked about, but I guess it might be a good idea for a future video, actually. Yeah, As, like visuals would really help an idea like that. I think. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're at the end. This is officially our longest episode by like 15 minutes. Really? Yeah. We, we beat Tears of the Kingdom? Oh yeah, <laughs> by far. By like, yes. Down by like 20 minutes. We're three minutes away from 20 minutes away. Yes, we got. We finally have a feature-length film. <laughs> Here we do. do. It's, it's officially 90 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. This is gonna take so long to upload to Google Drive. <laughs> so, anyways, if you made it this far. Uh, we have a second song uh, from our uh, fans here. Uh, I think this one was from this one was from Fall Guys, and this was chosen by Amphi. Uh, what was the title of the song? I have no idea. Fall Guys. <laughs> Fall Guys. <laughs> That's the title. Fall Guys. Fall Guys. <laughs> Fall Guys theme. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us in our second to last podcast episode. Uh, next week will be a special episode considering we've never done a style like that. Uh, you'll find out next week uh, what the style is. Uh, we'd love it if you could follow us on Twitter. And uh, it's not Twitter, it's X. Listen, our, uh, listen to all our previous podcast episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast platforms. We will be keeping them up for quite a while. Um, I will be trying to find a free version to try to host it. Join our community Discord server to continue today's discussion. And we'll see you next time for one last time on the Switch Clicks podcast.